Recording live from northwest suburbs of Minneapolis. This is Twin Cities Affiliates. I'm the host and the creator, Coop DeVille. And on today's episode, I'm going to be interviewing one of my favorite people I used to watch growing up. Uh, brother's been doing a lot in the Twin City community for decades. Uh, motivational speaker, mentor, brother's done a lot. And the brother I'm speaking of is former University of Minnesota Golden Gopher, Richard Coffey, also who played for the Minnesota Timberwolves at one point. So I'm going to be interviewing him and getting to know the background of him and how he became a Twin City affiliate and um, talk about his past and some of the things that uh, he's doing now in the community and some of the things, some ideas where we can come together as uh, a group of people in, in the Twin Cities area and the state of Minnesota for that matter. So um, yeah, I'm very excited, you know, very excited for the show. So without any further ado, I'm going to get Richard Coffey on here and see what's going on with this brother. All right, Mr. Richard Coffey, appreciate you coming uh, to Twin City Affiliates podcast. Um, it's an honor, brother. For sure. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Definitely, definitely, man. Um, we're just going to dive into it. Um, for me personally, it's an honor because you were my favorite gopher. And I appreciate that's, that. That's 100% real talk and my parents' favorite gopher. <laughs> and, uh, Man, that's my awesome. Mom, my mom was a teacher at Earl Brown Elementary School. And um, she, her principal used to give her a couple of tickets every year. Like, the, you know, like if he had to go out of town, because he was a senior yeah. ticket holder. So if he couldn't make it, she was like the first choice he would give tickets. Oh, awesome. So every year we would at least go to about, I would say about three, four games. Nice. And we had good seats. Nice. I just remember you, the energy of the team, man. I just remember you diving after loose balls, getting rebounds, yeah. defending, doing everything that was needed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for me, I just, when I saw, because I used to always go to Clem Haskins camps. Yeah. And so every time I saw the shorts that said play hard on the back, that to me it was Richard Coffey. That was man. the, the – definition of that i appreciate that brother I have, I have to share that man i appreciate that man i i yeah it was um you know everybody had a role on that team and my my role was really you know defending rebounding and doing all the little things we had we had some very talented individuals on that team you know yep. willie burton was on that team he is mm -hmm. he's by far the most talented individual that i've ever had on any teams that i've been on yeah guys like that on the team you know you just you got to play your role and, and that's why we were so successful because we were able to do i was able to do my role and other other individuals were able to do their role as well with no jealousy or envy to guys that were had different roles so that that's why that team worked so well yeah man and i remember as a kid i remember me being so young i can remember seeing the brotherhood though yeah like what, what you just said about everybody yeah. for the role I yeah. that was another thing that I remember of that. Yeah. I think that's why you guys did so good because it was like yeah. you guys played for each other. For sure, for sure it was, and it was, you know, it was difficult in the beginning uh, because everyone that you know, every everyone that plays basketball at that level, everyone wants to score. You know, everyone wants to have that that be a part of their game, and I was no different from that. But I think what Clem did so well. Um, from our freshman year, you know, our freshman and sophomore year, we were terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but what Clem was doing in the process of those two years, he was really teaching us the importance of uh, team and really getting, you know, your individual thoughts out of the word team. And when he, when he really convinced everyone that, you know, this is your role and you can be successful in that role. Right. And, and still have people see you as uh, an individual that they may be looking at for the next level. Um, 
And once he convinced everyone of that, man, we started winning basketball games. And it became, it became so fun and we became tighter and closer. Mm -hmm. and, and even to this day, I keep in contact with a lot of those, a lot of those cats from that team, man. You know, it is a brotherhood. Good. And, you, know, Good. They, you know, those guys would be my brothers. You know, that death do us part. And for me, that y'all would always be something I look up to for life. I appreciate that, you know man. Saying? Like this is this is real talk. Um, I appreciate that. So let me just start from the beginning. You know, um, sure. the the point of you know this podcast is just having a Minnesota pride. You know, um, and what a Twin City affiliate is is yeah. anybody that's born and raised from here or people that have moved here lived here for at least, you know, I, I would say about four or five years and yeah. beyond. And it's just, like I said, it's just a platform where we can just have Minnesota pride. Cause for me growing up, it was sort of lacking or right. people always right. want to say that I'm, hey, I'm from, I'm from Chicago and they moved right. to Minnesota. <laughs> right. Man, you went to elementary school with me and everything. So, you know what I'm saying? So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on. Um, so let's just start from getting, how did you become a Twin City affiliate? So the people that don't know. You for sure, for sure. So I originally came here um, to go to school. Um, I was recruited by Clem Haskins um, to attend the University of Minnesota and pursue an education and play basketball for the university. And, and honestly, I, I didn't know anything about Minnesota or the Midwest. You know, I'm, I'm a Southern boy. I, I'm, I'm from the South and uh, Clem found me. Um, and I remember me coming on my visit, it was in May, and mm -hmm. the weather was amazing. And <laughs> man, I was like, man, this is awesome. This yeah. guy, the city is nice. And, yeah. and then when I came back in September and school started, man, November hit, I was like, man. <laughs> it was like a it was like a whole different thing. Like this wasn't was like, the man. this wasn't the, recruit, this wasn't the visit. <laughs> They didn't talk about this on the recruiting yeah, trip. That's <laughs> <how it is>. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I got here, though. That's how that's how I came came to Minnesota. Okay, good, good. So, um, so from so from the schooling, and I know you uh, you went on to play professional a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So just go into that real quick. Yeah, man, it was a blessing, man. You know, out of out of high school, I was small. I was. When I graduated from high school, I was 6'1", 160 pounds. Oh, really? Wow. I graduated. Yeah. I know that. And, um, and I had, my dad, my dad, I had an amazing dad. Man, my, my, my parents just, I, I feel so blessed to have had the parents that I had when I was growing up. Uh, my mom was a strong woman, but my dad, my dad was, was a, an amazing father. And I, you know, the little small town I'm from, it didn't have a lot of opportunity in that town whatsoever. Okay. And the one industry that hired all of the men was an acid and phosphate industry, and it was not a good environment. You know, my dad worked there until he died. Wow. He died at 58. My, my uncle worked there. He died at 61. It was just a rough environment. It was so right. physical. My dad didn't want that for me. So he, you know, I remember him him taking me to the one little small diner we had in our town and he sat me down and I was a senior in high school. And I had I hadn't planned to do anything with my life. I I and I hadn't thought about what happens after graduation. And man, I love I loved where I grew up. My parents did a great job at creating a safe, a safe environment for my siblings and I. And man, it was awesome to live there. So I I I, I just thought I would live there forever. Right. My dad took me to this diner when I was a senior in high school, and he said to me, he said, you graduate in June. And I said, yes, sir. He said, by September, you have to be out of my house. You cannot stay here. Wow. You, cannot, you cannot live in this town. You have to go and find your life, and your life is not here. I was, I was, I was terrified of that. Yeah. <clears throat> but, and that you know, sounds like he, he really meant it. Like, yeah. Oh no, I, I had to leave. I yeah. mean, I, wow. and, and, but he helped me figure it out. So I, 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 you know, I decided to go in the military because I wasn't sure about if I was college, if I was college ready, or if I was even college material. Okay. You know? So I went in the military, and in the military, I grew five inches and, and gained fifty pounds in like three years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and and I started playing basketball and. and, and 
college should start recruiting me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when Clem came along. And that what, what was different about Clem was he was, he, he reminded me of my dad. You know, they, they're, they're cut from the same cloth. Mm. And when Clem came to visit uh, my parents, mm-hmm. um, that was it. I mean, when my dad met Clem and they went out and talked on that little swing, we got out back in the yard. They went out and mm-hmm. talked about an hour, hour and a half with wow. just them two. Man, when he came back in, my dad looked at me and he was like, this is the man I want to, this is the man I want to, I want you to be with. Wow. And he said, this is your decision, but if, if I have anything to do with this decision, and you know, I, this is the man I want you to be with. So I signed with him because I, you know, my dad was always in my corner and, mm-hmm. and I was still a young man trying to figure out things. And, you know, my dad had a lot of wisdom and, and I was like, I'm, I'm going with what you say, Pops. So yeah. I can't do the rest of Minnesota. Yeah. I didn't. And, to let everybody know, I did not come to the University of Minnesota because the University of Minnesota was so great and I just wanted to go to the University of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I came to the University of Minnesota for one reason, and that was Clem Haskell. Wow. And you know, man, like I remember just meeting Clem, uh, Mr. Clemens, I mean, Mr. Haskins a couple of times. And um, it's everything you said, man. And I remember, yeah. you know, and I was uh, cool with his son, Brent, and it was yeah. just really really good family a humble family yeah, yeah. Because i remember yeah. that yeah a great family man you know my, my father died when i was in college oh man and, I didn't know that. and, and man i that, that was that was very difficult for me and wow. uh, and uh, coach haskins and his wife yvette mm-hmm. they played such a big role in my life even beyond basketball um you know, at that point and, and uh, over the years, you know, just having someone like Clem in your life that you can reach out to and talk to has been super helpful, um, mm-hmm. you know, super helpful. So then expanding on that, so then how was it playing for him then? Like you, 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 uh, laid, you explained how, you know, he was just like your dad. So yeah. when he was playing for him, did that, was that what um, created the family? Atmosphere? For sure. Yeah. For sure, you know. He, again, he was, you know. My I grew up in a my my father was my father was very disciplined and very strict. We we had to do we had to do our chores. You had to do them right away. You know, one of one of one of my chores, one of my brothers and I chores was every Saturday morning. We had to cut the grass before we went anywhere. Mm-hmm. Our yard, you know, we had one of those country yards. It was about the size of three football fields. <laughs> So we had three ride along mowers, we had three push mowers, and yeah. every Saturday morning before we left the house, we had to cut the grass. I don't care what. <laughs> don't you leave that? That was the old school. That cut. was some push ones. That wasn't no ride. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> don't you dare leave that house without getting that grass cut. So Clint was very similar, and his Clint was very similar in what his expectations and how he demanded things out of you. And I was used to that. I was used to that from my father. And I was also used to that from the military. So I loved Clem as a coach because the harder you worked, the more he liked you. Yeah. And I had I didn't have a problem with working hard. Wow. So, I just um, remember. so he and I got along great. He and I got along great. Now some other some other some other individuals struggled. You know, some of the guys that was coming straight out of high school, mm-hmm. you know, they struggled a little bit in the beginning because um, you know, it was it was Clem's way on the highway, yeah. And um, that was, but I, I found that beneficial to me because that was my personality as well. You know, I'm going to be 110 percent every time I step on the court, or whatever I do in life, I'm going to try to do it 110 mm-hmm. percent. And that just lined right up with kind of where my spirit was and and how I how I was built. Right, and and for me in my lifetime. Seeing that was the first time I saw the respect that Minnesota basketball got. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it didn't happen before me because obviously before I was born, right. was Kevin McHale and right, for sure. for Tucker sure. and all those and Michael sure. Thompson, sure. those greats. But yeah. I'm just saying for me personally, what I saw the first time we ever got any kind of respect on a basketball level was yeah. your team. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that whole era, which I think opened the door for other great Clint yeah. Atkins teams. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then the spotlight was on a lot of the homegrown yeah. players. 
Yeah. They and you know what? And I, I agree because, you know, and there were some great teams before us, but like you said, in your era, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm talking about my era as well. Not, not, you know, no disrespect to any of those teams that came before our team because there were some great teams and some great players. But I think at the time I came here, the team had just went through a lot of negative press with the year before, a lot of things, a lot of negative things happened on the team. Mm -hmm. And so when I came here, it was it was kind of a, man, you didn't even want to say you was on a basketball team. It was yeah. a negative thing. But what, but what Clem did, and he knew, he knew everything that we were going to go through. Mm. And, um, and and he was, you know, he was very strict and, and, and he was very, very concise in, in what he wanted to do and how he wanted us to act and, and how he wanted to build his program. And, and he recruited individuals that could, 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 could build a program. I remember when I first got on campus, I had a meeting with him. I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. And even though I was a freshman, you know, I was three years in the military. So he brought right. me to his office and he said, I know you're only a freshman, but I need you to be a leader on this team. Mm. And he said, you know, with your background, your experience, you've been in situations that these kids never been in. So wow. you know, they gonna look up to you right away. So you need you need to make sure you need to understand that people are watching you. You know, even when you don't think people are watching, people are watching. And I took I listened to that. And, and, when, I, and when I left that meeting, I mean, I was in there for about an hour. When I left that meeting, I was different mm -hmm. because I really listened to what he had to say. And, um, and, that, and that really helped me kind of navigate my way through the University of Minnesota and through uh, that basketball experience. Because at the time, when I was at the University of Minnesota, there were only 300 black students there. Wow. Now, the basketball team and the football team was probably half of that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So, so, so you, were in a, you were in an environment, and especially with with the negative things that have happened the year before with the basketball team. So now you are in an environment where people are waiting for you to fail. Mm -hmm. So, and we didn't really understand everything that was going on. Um, I think I understood it a little more than some of the younger players that was coming out of high school. So, um, um, so at the time, Clem was the best coach for the University of Minnesota to bring in with, with everything that had happened the year before because he was such a disciplined person. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that's just what the, the university really needed mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to just clear, you know, all that negative things sure. and, and to have some kind of um, aura, a nice, you know, good pride. For sure. People can, you know, all sure. be a part of. And For so sure. that's, that sort of goes into my, my next question. Um, like you said, it wasn't that many um, black people at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. but what was the perception from competition in general, like outside Minnesota, like when you guys would play, um, not, not necessarily in the Big Ten, because yeah. they probably knew something about, because, yeah. you yeah. know, that's your conference, but yeah. you guys would play outside the Big Ten, what was the perception like these hey, guys in Minnesota? Or? Our freshman year and, 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 and sophomore year, the perception was when we came to town, it was going to be an easy win mm. for, the, for, for the teams that we were visiting. Right. You, know, you know, there was no respect. You know, there was no respect in the Big Ten. You know, everybody thought that, you know, that <laughs> we were an easy win. And, and honestly, you know, those first two years, we were. Okay. And I remember, you know, and I remember, you know, I mean, it, you know how it, it's, it's very difficult when you, when you, when you play, and you step on the court every game and, and, and you really believe that you have an opportunity to win yep. and, you, and you end up losing by 20, 25 points. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was our experience, experience the first two years. And it was, it was very, it, one, it was very, it, one, it was very humbling. Okay. It was very humbling experience. And, but it was it was also frustrating as hell too, because we were working extremely hard, and mm -hmm. and you know we we had faith in our coaches, but but the thing that we never the thing that Clint would not let us do is we never doubted ourselves. Like he kept saying to us, "I promise you, I promise you, keep working. We're, we're going to turn the corner on this thing." 
And I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I promise you, you, you if you keep working hard, you keep believing, we're gonna turn the corner on this thing. And I remember um, my, my freshman year, man, I think we won nine games. Wow. And my, um, on my sophomore year, I think we won maybe 10 or 11 games. I mean, I'm talking about out of 30, we was getting our butt kicked. Wow. And we worked and we worked and we worked. And then our junior year, mm -hmm. and the transformation started to happen. And we started winning games. We started beating teams that was beating us by 20. We were now beating them by, you know, eight or nine points. And we're going on a roll and we winning games. And, and, the, and the more you experience that victory, the, 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 the hungrier you get for it. Yep. And, 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 the, and the more you can feel and experience it, the more you work hard for it, and the more you believe, and, and, and the more you commit to it. And when we when we started committing to that, man, we we end up we end up with a really good team for two years, and 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 it was it was an I would not change my college career as far as how the four years went for anything, mm -hmm. because what people don't understand is. Failure is not your enemy, right? Our right. first two years, people will see, man, we didn't win in the games, right? right. So in, right. in some aspects, that was kind of failure because the, the object is to win games. Mm -hmm. So we kind of failed at, at, at winning a lot of games, but, but failure is not your enemy. Failure can be a friend of yours if you use it right. Defeat is not your enemy. You can use defeat to make yourself better if, if you understand why you're getting defeated, mm -hmm. right? So, so I look back, those first two years really taught us we're not as good as we think. You got to work harder than you ever worked before. You got to be more committed than you've ever been committed before. And you got to keep working and you got to keep believing. That taught me how to be for the rest of my life. Those first two years, when we were losing, taught me. <clears throat> and, and then those second two years taught me if you stay consistent and if you work hard, it will happen. It might not happen in your timing, yep. but it will happen. Yep. And, and so I, I've lived the rest of my life based on those four years that I spent at the University of Minnesota. And it sounds like those first two years, it was like it laid down a foundation and a character for the Big team. Foundation. You guys had a um, personality as a group. Big foundation. Yeah. And, and it's also super important that you surround yourself with the right individuals. Because at the time when you're losing, mm -hmm. because when, when, when things aren't going well or, or you're getting defeated in a certain area, everybody's coming at you. Everybody outside your circle is gonna come at you. Yep. Yep. The newspapers, I mean, everybody was talking about how Clint wasn't a good coach, we had no good players. I mean, they, we were getting dogs in the newspaper and we we're reading that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we're reading it. Because it's on the front page of the sports section. I mean, you don't have no. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but 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 the the guys that we were surrounded with, our coaching staff, Mario Green, Willie Burton, Connell Lewis, Melvin Newburn, Chick and Jansky, Willie, uh, uh, Walter Bond, Nate Tubbs, you know myself, you know those guys. I mean, it was a squad. we believed in each other, and we believed in our coaching staff, and we believed in Clinton. Yeah. And when it start when it start to turn, man, you just you wanted to give everything that you had in your body to to the process of of, of turning this thing around, not just for yourself, but also for, for the coaching staff and for Clem. We we wanted Clem to be so successful because he has give, he, he had given us so much mm -hmm. in that first two years. And he pushed us like hell now. I mean, he pushed us. He, he was not, he was not an easy guy to play for. I mean, he, he was not, but he, he pushed you to the brink. I mean, he pushed you to your limits every day in practice, but that's how you got better though. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and I remember him coming to me and, he, and, and saying, look, man, I need you to focus on rebounding in defense. And I thought to myself, the, the first thought I had was, was, a, was a, a naturally was a selfish thought. I was like, man, I want to score. I mean, I'm trying to get to the NBA too. I want to play in the NBA. Man, I mean, they're not looking for rebounding and defense. No, I think all of us went through, went through that, yeah. yeah. You know what? You don't see hey, you don't see rebounders and defenders on Sports Center. You see no, people yeah. scoring. Especially back then. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. So, so like but, he, but he convinced me. He said, I promise you, if you, if you trust me, I will do everything that I can do to make sure people know who you are. And, and as I talk to scouts, I will be an advocate for you. And I did that. And, and I did that. And it, and it worked out. I mean, it, it worked out for me. And then, you know, I don't, I want, I don't want to keep talking about myself, but I just want you to understand, like, what that did for me. So as a kid, you know, like I said, you didn't really have too much Minnesota pride, except for, like, at that right. time, the Twins. The Twins the was twins, doing it. Right, right, right. right. Fuck it. Yeah. So, but besides that, like, I remember most of my family is from Chicago and Mississippi, so I would go to Chicago for all the holidays. Yeah. And I remember – that was when UNLV was 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 everybody wanted UNLV stuff. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I remember that 1990, my dad, we went to Jewtown in Chicago and he bought me the illest UNLV jumpsuit. Like you yeah. couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> so I was wearing the UNLV stuff, but when I saw you guys, and I'm like, man, this is right in my city. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you when I really, really, really like that whole year. I was I had a love for y'all, but when you guys got in that NCAA tournament, yeah, and y'all played Syracuse, yeah, I was so scared because <laughs> Derek Coleman was like the man, a beast, a beast. I'm a like, beast. and I remember talking to my dad and my mom, and my parents were like, Clem gonna have to really coach tonight. Cause, cause, dude, like Derek, and, and and you know the younger generation don't know, right? Because, you know Derek Coleman's NBA career was you know average or whatever, but right. in college, in college man, he was the man. So I remember being yeah. so scared when y'all played Syracuse, and then when y'all beat them, and y'all beat them like from the ground up, y'all yeah. were in their right face, the right? right. The and, and man, what that did for me is like. Man, at a young age, I'm like, I'm representing where I'm from. <laughs> awesome. You know what I'm awesome. saying? I was about 10 years old. Awesome, so, man. Awesome. Yeah, man. So awesome. it, that was that was major, man. That was Yeah, I, I'll never forget that game, man. You know, that that was um every, man, we were underdogs. I mean, every, you know, no one gave us a chance. Um it was all the commentary was about you know, Derek Coleman and, and the squad, you know, Syracuse squad, and rightly so, you know, they, they yeah, had performed they were great that year. They had one of the best players in the country on their team in Derek Coleman. Mm -hmm. And we was coming in as, the, you know, as the University of Minnesota, you know, unknown to a lot of national audience. Yep. Um, but we didn't care because at that point, man, we were, we were playing so hard and we were so focused that we, we, we were ready to take down anything that stepped in front of us. And I remember, I remember I, remember. I, remember I had a guard, Derek Coleman. <clears throat> and I remember like in the first two minutes, he and I got a little scuffle and I knocked him and I, I knocked him to the ground. Mm -hmm. And and I and I kind of bent down. I told him, I said, I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Letting them know, like we ain't scared, man. We ain't, we ain't scared, scared man. We ain't scared. <laughs> we ain't scared. <laughs> I mean, I love it, man. Like as a former Hooper, I, I I know what you mean by that, man. And it's just like I said, man. I can. I'm just having a flashback because I just remember it so vividly. And then we, I just remember when y'all won. My mom was just jumping all through the house, screaming. And because if if I'm not mistaken, that was the Sweet Sixteen game going into the Elite Eight, correct? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then I think y'all played Georgia Tech. Play Georgia Tech, and we should have won that game. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like you know, and it like, came down to the wire. It did, and, and I'm so like I'm so frustrated about that game because what a lot of people don't know, you know, we got the NCAA sent the University of Minnesota a letter of apology because in in that game, two out of the three referees were from the ACC. Wow. That never supposed to happen. I never knew that. That never supposed to happen. And yeah. another thing that another thing that people don't understand in that game, in that game, Dennis Scott had 39 points, mm -hmm. amazing player. Yep. He had 39 points. 23 of those points were from the free throw line. Uh, now on the flip side, Willie Burton, our star, had 38 points. Mm -hmm. He shot zero free throws. What? I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. Man. Wow, Man. that's 
That's that's really crazy. Man, uh, so it's like that game, man, as, as to this day, that game stings my heart, man. Uh, that, that game stings my heart. Yeah. It is what it yeah, is. We, we had a great run, and um, – we had a we had a great team of uh, and a great group of guys, but I'm telling you, man, that was my senior year, mm-hmm. and and when that when 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 that that after that last game when that buzzer rang for the last time, yeah, you that had to be down, that had to be hard, man. I mean, I remember our last game at the University of Minnesota. We played Michigan State. Mm-hmm. It was our last home game, and um, we went. You know, after the game, we went downstairs, but the, the fans wouldn't leave. I mean, so we came back up and we, you know, we start running around the court, dude. I just broke down and started crying because I had thought about the past four years and everything that I, that I try to give to this state and, and to, the, to the University of Minnesota. I, get, I gave everything that I could possibly give. And, and now thinking about moving on from that was very difficult. And I think, you know, back then, Players played more three to four years, so it yeah. was more of what you were talking about. You had such a love because that's yeah. like a section of your life that leads you into the path of being a man. Yeah. And right. then not right. not knocking any, you know, the younger generation now where for sure. it's for one sure. and done because, you know, the opportunities for are sure. opportunities. For there. sure, for sure. But I think what you're explaining is you being there four years and most of the players, because I think yeah. the whole starting lineup was all seniors except for – All seniors, yeah. We, yeah, we were all seniors. No, it was everybody. Yeah, we were all we, – no, we had – I think Kevin Lynch was a junior. Was a junior, yeah. Yeah, he was starting, but everybody else were seniors. And so you see what I'm saying? So that yeah. had to be like – now it's over. It's just like, man. Man, it was it was a lot. It was it was it when it, when when it's over, man. It's a it's hard, and and I and I'm sure it's even harder for those for those players around the country, even today, for those young men and women that play at a high level, play high level sports in college. When it's over, and and you don't go on to the next level. Mm-hmm. Man, it's 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 a it's a difficult transformation. Yeah, you know, to, you know, from 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 high profile sports to <clears throat> coming to what the real world looks like. Right. Uh, I even experienced that when I finished playing professional basketball. Yeah. When I realized that I wasn't going to p- go, you know, play any play professionally professionally anymore, I, I had to go through that 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 transformation. And then even then. Even me being older and more mature, it was still difficult um, to say, I'm done playing this sport that I played my entire life. life. Yeah. I'm done playing it at, at this level. Mm-hmm. And I've never, I've never played at this level again in my life. It was difficult. And it's probably difficult, too, because it's not just the playing, but the preparation, the, the routines, the people that you meet, the opportunities of other things that open yeah. up. It's everything. It had to be it's tough. Everything. So was playing four years at the University of Minnesota, was that um, a big enough thing that caused you to stay here or move back here and, and live so, here for the rest of your adult life? So when I, when I, when I, so I, like I said, I didn't know a lot about Minnesota or the University of Minnesota when I came. I just knew I wanted to play for Penn. Uh-huh. I got here, I, I started thinking about life after basketball because honestly i had i had no intentions or hopes to play professional basketball okay i just didn't think i was i didn't think i was good enough I, you know growing up in north carolina and growing up in the south you know back back then the nba games were all take delayed still yep. i didn't watch nba growing up I, I watched some football i wanted to be tony dorsett there you go you know? <laughs> For the Dallas Cowboys, I didn't watch the NBA. I, so I, when I came to college, when I came to college to play basketball, one, I'm not even gonna lie. When I first got here, I thought I was gonna be on the JV team. Okay. I thought they had a JV team that I was coming to play on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, I, so my expectation, you know, wasn't really high. Um, so what, what, but what happened? The four years I was at University of Minnesota, I fell in love with the city because. One thing that Clem helped me with, when, and I, and 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 I, you know, I don't know if he had forethought or, or not, but so so one thing that happens when you get here, that you know, Clem took over the same. My first year was his first year, and 
you know, there was a lot of groups that wanted him to come and speak. Mm -hmm. It was the Lions Club, the, this supper club, you know, this group. Yeah, they all yeah. wanted, but they also wanted him to bring a player. Okay. And we had 10 freshmen on our team because everybody from the previous year had left. Right. So he came up to me and he said, look, I got you know, to bring a player with me to these events. You need to come and you need to speak for about five minutes. I was like, five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's That's like 50 time. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, mean, I can't do that, man. Yeah. So yeah. you got to come and speak, man. You got to come. So that was the first time that I really got into speaking, even though it was for probably two or three minutes. Gotcha. But it was terrifying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did a lot. Oh, man, you know, and arms and oh, raw and man. So I, I, you know, but I got better as I went. And, um, and then I started to like it. And but what it did, though, it showed me different parts of the city. Right. You know, we would drive out, you know, we would drive out to Bloomington or you know, drive out to Eden Prairie or you know, drive out to these places that we never really went. Right. Right. So it showed me different parts of the city and then we would go downtown. You know, I never really went downtown. The only reason I went downtown was to see the movie to the movie theaters that was on Hennepin. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that movie theater that movie theater that was on yep. Hennepin? Yeah, because I remember my parents would go there and then they, Yeah, they yeah. So that's what I would go downtown for that. That was it. Yeah. Um, so that show starts showing me different parts of the city, but I also met a lot of individuals through doing that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, so my my thought was, if I you know if I stay here and I graduate, I can get a really good job um, mm -hmm. and make a make a decent living for myself. Because my choices were at the time was to either stay stay at the U. I mean, stay in Minnesota after I graduate. Or move where I didn't have any other experience right. anywhere other than back to North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I knew, although my father had passed away at, at the time, I knew my father did not want me back in North Carolina. Right. So I'm going to respect that in him, and you know, so I decided to stay here. And and Minnesota has been amazing for me. Yeah. I mean, Minnesota has been amazing for me. I mean, it's just such a you know, and I'm biased because I'm born and raised, but, you know, um, I take pride in that. And it's yeah. just such a um, family oriented city. It is. You know, it is. so. Um, it is. And then you just keep seeing people move here because of the job yeah. opportunities, like you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, um, and then a lot of people, it's funny, a lot of people that move here and they've been here for 20 years or whatever, and they love to represent something else, but deep down it's like they love it here because I, I know a lot of people that will move and then they end up coming back here coming right back you know what I'm saying? Coming so, right back and it's just yeah. an underlying thing so that was one of the like i was saying earlier that was one of the things why i created the platform because i was just yeah like, and it's people have to just start representing right this this city and just having having a pride for it right right so, yeah mm -hmm.